Hello, I'm Jennifer Egger. I teach typography in the digital media department here at Otis College of Art and Design. And today I thought we would discuss some typographic terms. Typography is the study of letter forms and fonts or typefaces. Anyone who uses a computer anymore is in some way a typographer. More developed typographers actually design typefaces and that kind of thing. But I think that in order to discuss typography, it's important to be able to use the vocabulary. Okay, here we go. So, a baseline is the imaginary line on which all type sits. It doesn't matter whether the line is straight or curved. That imaginary line is called a baseline. That's an important line. Just another important line is the X height line. It's called an X height line because it goes across the lowercase letters. X is the only one that's flat at the top and the bottom, and the line is easier to draw. Every other letter has something either sticking up or going down and X is flat on top and flat on bottom X height line. Serifs. There are different kinds of typefaces. There are typefaces that have serifs. Serifs are doohickeys, uh, thingy-mabobs, little extensions that come off of bigger strokes. Sometimes they're round, sometimes they're pointy, sometimes they're, they look like feet, but those are all serifs. Typefaces that don't have serifs are called sans serif. Sans in French is without, so without serifs. We've got serifs in the world, and we've got sans serifs that we're not showing you today. If a stroke comes to an end and there is no serif, that is called a terminal. So as you can see, we've got our serif up there. Stroke continues, ends, no serif. Stroke, no serif, terminal. A stem is the main stroke of a letter. It's, if you imagine yourself drawing the letter form, it's generally the first one that you make. It's almost always a vertical stroke, and it's referred to as a stem. That's on straight letters. On curved letters, the stem is then called a spine, and it's the thicker portion of a curved letter. So on a curved letter, the stem is called a spine. A shoulder is a curved part of the letter form that generally comes off of a main stroke. If you imagine these to be body parts, they actually look like shoulders. So it doesn't matter whether they go all the way down or just partially up, that curve is called a shoulder. A bowl. Every letter has, every round letter has a bowl and a counter. It doesn't matter whether that round shape is fully enclosed or partially open. That round bowl shape is called a bowl. And the negative space inside of the bowl is called a counter. So Outside shape, bowl. Inside shape, counter. The E is extra special. It's the only one that has an I. So what would be a counter on any other letter is an I on the E. Ascenders. Those are parts of the letter form that go above the X height line. Not the whole letter form, just the part that extends is called an ascender. And a descender is the part of the letter form that drops below the baseline. So P's, J's, Y's, Q's have descenders. Ascender up, descender down. Uppercase and lowercase. Fancy names are majuscule for the uppercase and minuscule for the lowercase. Anyone who speaks Spanish knows that one. Uppercase is called uppercase because back in the day, type used to be set in cases. And all the majuscules were in the uppercase, and all the minuscules were in the lowercase. Genius. The G is a special letter. It has lots of special parts. What would be a serif on any other letter is an ear on a G. This bottom shape is called a loop, and the thing that connects your loop to your bowl is a link. So Gs are the only ones that have ears, links, and loops. A crossbar is a horizontal stroke, generally attaches to two sides. It is what it says. It's a crossbar. When it doesn't attach to two sides, it's called an arm. So again, if you imagine little bodies, those would be arms. Ooh, ligatures. Ligatures are letter forms that are connected. That's a simple term. But the reason that they exist is because sometimes when you put certain letters together, they create weird spaces or weird looks. The serif on the F is conflicting with the tittle on the I. That's a freebie, tittle. I learned that on Jeopardy. Um, and they fight with each other. And if you get them any closer, it gets worse. So, ta-da, ligature figured them out. So the serif becomes the tittle of the I. 
we're all good. And they sit nicely next to each other. Waist is two strokes that intersect. Doesn't matter whether it's above the baseline or below the baseline. Where the two letter forms connect, or intersect rather, is a waist. So those are some typographic terms. There's many more where those came from, but that should get you started on being able to discuss type in some sort of meaningful way. Thanks.